Um, so, right, a very warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining us on the last day of the Metamorphosize program. If you're just joining us, um, I'm going to give you a brief. We've had about, we've had exactly seven days, and today's the day seven of this program. And on every, on each day, we have looked at various topics, you know, that affect us as uh, young women in Christ. And basically, we're just looking at how we can grow, because if you know the story or the meaning of metamorphosis, it talks about, about uh, growth, about transformation. Uh, basically, you take a look at the butterfly when it moves from the lava stage to the pupa stage, and then when it finally becomes a very beautiful butterfly. And that's the idea behind metamorphosis, talking about how, you know, by discussing these things, we hope that each one of us would have learned something would have grown, would have been changed, would have been transformed into a very better version of ourselves. In each of these aspects, we have looked at prayers. Okay, I'm going to start from um, the first the first day. We looked at purpose. We looked at practical steps, not just, you know, the um, aspire to aspire kind of purpose uh, achievement or achieving purpose, way of achieving purpose. The practical steps that we can take you know, to start to work and actualize and, you know, make our purpose come to reality. And then we looked at um, knowing my body. On that second day, we brought in a, a gynecologist, Dr. Maki, and he talked to us about, you know, being a woman. He basically took us from the very beginning of, uh, of womanhood, which starts at puberty up until menopause. You know, we got to ask various health questions, especially regarding reproductive health. And then on the third day, we talked about rape and all the kinds of abuse and how it affects women in the society. More importantly, we looked at how to move on, how to take care of ourselves, how to prevent these things from happening to the best of our abilities. And then on the fourth day, we looked at um, finance because that's very important. If we're talking about growth as a woman and you know, it's very, very key that we also talk about financial independence. And so that's what we looked at on the fourth day, um, which was taken by um, uh, past, well, Mrs. Titi Lopeadebue. And then um, on the fifth day, we looked at the praying woman, you know, very essential. So we looked at how this, you know, this, this woman that we're trying to be, that we're trying to achieve you know, that womanhood, how do we get there? How do we achieve ours? How do we get the strength? How do we get the ability to achieve what we want to be? And we look at the essential or the secret of that successful woman, her most important secret. And we came to realize uh, through our speaker, Mrs. Adela Obayemi, that her secret is that God is her greatest ally. Um, if someone is your ally, you will do everything to please that person, to remain in a good relationship with that person, and you continue talking to that person. It's, it was very wonderful. And of course, yesterday we talked about sex. We talked about how to deal with the raging hormones. And our guests yesterday, Mrs. Abimbola Boba, they took us through, you know, the fact that having surges and urges, you know, hormone surges and urges is pretty normal. There's nothing wrong with that. And we just have to, you know, master it and know that we don't allow our our emotions or the hormones control us. So we take charge, we take the reins. And uh, it was very, very wonderful. And of course, today being the grand finale, we're very excited to have Mama Jane Arbowolo. She'll be talking to us on marriage what to do. Um, the, the subtopic is ready while waiting. So basically, um, you know, what do we do now that we're ready? Oh, if you're not ready, because I know, I mean, we have a, quite a number of people <laughs> from varying ages, and it might just be that you're just doing your thing, and eventually you hope it will come. You have a two-year plan, a three-year plan, four-year plan for marriage. Whatever the case may be, we're looking at ready while waiting. And our guest is already in the studio, so we're just going to start straight away. Um, we have uh, Joke, Sister Jokia Dibade. She'll be taking the opening prayer for us, after which I will read the profile of our guest for today. And then she's here. We'll welcome her, and she will begin. Uh, let's start straight away. Um, hi, uh, Joke. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming in here. Hi, good afternoon. All right. Um, did you just... Uh, uh, goes to uh, start straight away. Please lead us in opening prayers. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
Um, mm. Most heavenly Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We thank you for how far you've come with us. We thank you for the conception of this program. We thank you mm -hmm. for day one down to the final day, day seven. We thank you for the growth process that you started in each and every one of us that is connected mm -hmm. to this program. We give you all the glory. We say be the exalted in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Father Lord, we commit this session into your hands. Father, we are ready to learn at your feet. We are ready to hear from you. Holy Spirit of God, we say have your way in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Father, we say the speaker, you will soak her in your blood. Everything, Amen. oh God, that you want us to learn throughout today, she will minister Amen. unto us in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we pray at the end of today that all your all, all, all the glory will be yours in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayer. We declare this service upon the name of the Father and of Amen. the Son and of the Holy Amen. Spirit. In Jesus' Amen. mighty name we've prayed. Amen. 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 Thank, Amen. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. All right. So um, because we're already eating into our time, I'm just going to straight away read the profile of our wonderful guest. Um, our guest for today, like I've announced before, is Reverend Mrs. Jane Arolo. She's fondly called Mama Jane. She's a great woman of God that has been impacting many lives through counseling, teaching and prayers. She has been in the ministry for more than 20 years. Uh, she's a convener of When Mothers Pray, a prayer meeting where women pray for their children and husband, direction for singles and married, a monthly teaching for everyone, Leaning Ladies International, a WhatsApp group with more than 5,000 ladies, Men Alive, which she coordinates alongside her husband. Mama Jane, as she's fondly called, I mentioned that, is a woman who is intentional about seeing others make it in all areas of their lives. She's always looking out for both male and females who are interested in having a good relationship with God and their partners. Her vision is to raise both men and women for the kingdom while they have amazing marriages. She loves to pray, sing, dance, cook, etc. She's also a professional baker. Well, she is a mother of three big boys with a lot of spiritual sons and daughters. And I agree with one of them. We are some of her spiritual sons and daughters. She's happily married to the man of her dream, Apostle Wale Arolo, God's mobile altar. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're with us, please make a wonderful welcome, Mrs. Reverend Mrs. Jane Arolo. Mama Jane, <laughs> good afternoon. Good evening, Mama. We're so delighted to have you. Thank you so much for taking time to be here with us today. We Thank are very much for Thank you, ma'am. All right, so because we've already started and I know we've already eaten into the time we gave you, I'm just going to exit the studio, I'll be in the background, and then you can proceed to um, share with us what you have for today, ma'am. All right, thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I want to thank everybody for joining us this evening. Thank you for being here, and I know that your coming here today is going to add to your, to your life in Jesus' name. Um, I've been given a topic and I have 30 minutes. So I'm supposed to, 35 minutes rather, I'm supposed to stop this by 15 minutes to five. So I'll be watching my time. So I want to talk about um, marriage, ready while waiting, ready while waiting, ready while waiting. Yeah. So today, I want us to look at the scripture, uh, Exodus 10, Ecclesiastic, sorry, Ecclesiastic chapter 10, verse 15. I like to read from the Amplified Version, Ecclesiastic 10, 15. Please just write the scripture uh, on the comment section, Ecclesiastic 10, 10, 15. Ecclesiastic 10, 15. It says, the labor of fools... The labor of fools wearies every one of them because he is so ignorant. He is so ignorant of the ordinary matters that he does not even know how to get to town. He is so ignorant of ordinary matters that he doesn't even know how to get to town, even though he's, he's, uh, uh, he, he has invested he has invested money, 
the Bible addressed this man as a, a man who works. The Bible says his labor did not produce. His labor did not yield any results. His labor did not, nothing happened through his neighbor. Why? Because he's ignorant of ordinary matters. He's ignorant. He doesn't know the way to the city. And that's why you see a lot of people labor on wedding, spend so much money on wedding, spend so much money, millions of Naira, Ashwebi and all of that, all the stress that comes with organizing a wedding. And at the end of the day, it's either they go on separate ways or they are in the marriage, not happy, not fulfilled. The Bible called them ignorant people. So when you find people who are not enjoying their marriage, you find people who are ignorant of the ways to enjoy marriage. The Bible calls it, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 10, 15, that they do not know the way to the city, even though they have put in labor, even though the man is rich, even though, please, I, I, I hope you can hear me. Okay, good. Even though the man is rich, even though the lady is beautiful, even though she can cook good food, but yet he, the, their, their labor, the money, the beauty, the skills are all wasted and seems useless because they are ignorant of basic things, basic knowledge. They are ignorant of basic knowledge. Look at another scripture. Look at another scripture in Proverbs 14.23. Proverbs 14.23. It says, Proverbs 14.23. Help me write it there. Proverbs 14.23. It says, um, in all labor, there is profit. So actually, there's supposed to be profit. There's a reason why you invested money into wedding. There is a reason why you want to get married. There's a reason why you cut it for four years, three years, or two years, as the case may be. He says, there is supposed to be profit. He said, but I do talk leads to poverty. In fact, it says, I do talk leads only to poverty. Poverty means failure. I do talk leads to failure. So it means when you are talking, when you are planning, and you don't have knowledge, it will lead to failure. May you not fail in Jesus' name. May you not fail in the name of Jesus. So when you're talking, I do talk, I want to get married. Oh, I love her. Oh, I love him. I want to marry him. Or oh, I want to marry her. The Bible says that all these I do talks, what makes a talk I do when it is not backed up with action? That's what makes a talk I do. If you are a medical doctor today, you didn't just become a medical doctor. You went through processes. You prepared. You learned, you learned a lot of things before you became a medical doctor. You had a passion, but you had to invest into that passion. You did not just walk into the hospital and say, because I have passion to treat patients, I have passion to treat sick people, and let me just start working. No, nobody's going to listen to you. Nobody's going to take you serious. You went through process, you went through school, you took lectures, you did a lot of things. At the end of the day, you became a medical doctor. Marriage is not excluded. Do you understand? You don't just go into marriage and say marriage is about a man and a woman going in, have children, sleep on the same bed, drop feeding money, uh, have sex with my husband, and that's all. No, marriage is more than that. Because being a medical doctor is more than just having a passion to treat patients. You needed to study. You needed to learn. And that's what the Bible says in Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, that people will perish when they don't have knowledge. People will perish. You know a lot of people who have died in the hands of quack doctors. When there is no knowledge, people will perish. So we need to, we need to understand. We need to, we need to understand what to do. While waiting to be married, what am I supposed to know? What am I supposed to learn? And I have, I have there's a, there's a pain. There's a pain I have, and that's about um, men. I discovered that a lot of men just live all their lives to work for money, and then when it is time for marriage, maybe their mother will now begin to, you know, talk and flog them with words, won't you marry, won't you marry, won't you marry? 
and then he goes and get married. A lot of men don't know anything about marriage. As a lot of men don't know anything about marriage. A lot of men don't know anything about women. And the Bible says in First Peter chapter 3, verse 7, it says, dwell with them according to knowledge. He said, you husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. So what knowledge do you have, sir? A lot of men don't know anything about women. A lot of men don't know, because men are not interested in anything that has to do with marriage, learning, or talk. You do marriage seminars, it's only ladies you will see there. Men won't come. That's why we have a lot of cheats, husbands cheating on their wives because they are so clueless. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to win their wives. We keep teaching women. We keep having women conferences. We keep impacting women. These men are always absent. They are not even interested. They don't know anything. You understand? You get married to a virgin. You don't know how to handle her. You are fighting her. You are angry. You refuse to eat. You pick two shirts and one trouser and leave home. You don't know how to make the marriage work. You don't know who a woman is. You don't know how to care for her. You don't know how to nurture. You were raised to make money, hunt for a lady, marry her, and drop the money. Life marriage is more than that. So I want us to begin to grow passion. Just like you... Whatever that is putting money in your hands today, you learned about it. You went to study about it. So there is a way you sit down. If you can't read books, you can attend meetings. You can attend a, a meeting like this will also help you. So that's big pain I want us to always look at as men. It's very important. Um, God will help us in the name of Jesus. We are talking about ready while waiting. What are those things that I should be ready for while waiting for marriage? So don't just sleep every night waiting for a proposal. Don't just wake up every morning looking for a lady to, to pop the question for, will you marry me? There are other things to begin to do so that when you get into marriage, you can enjoy yourself. Marriage is not a battleground. Marriage is not war. One of my daughters wrote me, said, Mama, they said marriage is a battleground. I asked her, who told you? Because mine is not a battleground. Marriage is not supposed to be a battleground. Marriage is a place where you go to fulfill destiny. Marriage, Bible says two are better than one. They will have good reward for their labor. So marriage is a place where you go and get better reward. You understand? Bountiful harvest. That's what marriage is supposed to be. And I pray in the name of Jesus, God will give you such experience in Jesus' name. So the first thing I want to talk about today, what are those things I should be ready for while waiting for marriage? What are those things I should be ready for? Number one, find yourself first before finding your partner. Somebody please put that in the comment section for me. If you are here this evening following me, put that in the comment section for me. Find yourself first before finding your partner. While waiting for marriage, it is important for you to find yourself. While waiting for marriage, it is important to make sure your happiness is not tied to anybody. Are you getting what I'm saying? It is important to find yourself first before finding your partner. Thank you for that. It is important for you not to tie your happiness to anybody. It is important for you to find your inner peace and your inner fulfillment. While waiting for marriage, find yourself. A lot of people have not found themselves before they found their spouse. That's why they get lost inside of marriage. They get lost. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. So find yourself. Don't live in the shadow of anybody. Establish your own identity. Do you understand? Learn to be happy. The Bible says in the book of Luke, it says, Anybody that wants to build a house should first sit down alone to count his cost. So there is a place of being single. There is a when I'm talking about single now, I'm not talking about not being married, I'm talking about being alone, being happy with being alone, finding your own joy and definition, understanding your identity and your uniqueness, and accepting it. You understand? Not just accept it, rejoice in it, and be proud and confident of it. Find your identity. What are the visions and goals you have for yourself and your generation? What are your visions? What are your goals? Marriage should not be your vision. Marriage should be an avenue to fulfill your vision. I hope somebody got that this afternoon. 
Marriage should not be your vision. Marriage should be an avenue to fulfill your vision. Are you meant, I'm still talking about finding yourself. I'm still talking about finding yourself. I'm still talking about finding yourself. Are you mentally, physically, and spiritually healthy? It's also important for you to make sure you are physically, while waiting for marriage, pay attention to your physical health. Pay attention to your mental health. Pay attention to your spiritual health while waiting for marriage. Pay attention. Pay attention to your emotional health, your mental health, your physical health. Are you struggling with sexual sins? Find help, not love. Did you hear what I've just said? While waiting for marriage, it is important for you to find yourself. Don't drag another person into your mess. Make sure that mess becomes a message. Don't bring another person into your struggles. Make sure that struggle turn to testimony. Your physical health, you are sick in your body. I, I spoke with a lady who got married to a man who didn't have erection. And the man told her that he, she must not tell anybody. This man knew he didn't have erection and he still went ahead to propose to this lady and married this lady. And now he's telling the lady that she must not tell anybody and that she's expected to submit because that's what the Bible says. Your physical health. While waiting for marriage, find solution. Find help. Some of you are extremely jealous. It's okay to be jealous for someone you love, but there is what they call unhealthy jealousy. Your mental health is not correct. You are sick mentally. If you don't want the person you love to speak to any other person but you, you have a problem. Your mental health has a problem. So make sure you are mentally healthy. Your spiritual life, while waiting for marriage, your spiritual life, because there is nothing that, that shakes your spiritual life like marriage. If you don't have spiritual stability as a man, if you don't have spiritual stability as a woman, marriage will make you, marriage will bring, will, you will be confronted with a lot of decisions. One of the secrets of my happy home is my husband and I, we had a spiritual life. We still have the spiritual life before we got married and we still have that spiritual life. You know what a good spiritual life does for you? It helps you to make right decisions because you would consider God before you make any decision. And listen to me, any decision you take considering God will be a good and a quality decision that will benefit the other person. You know why you decided to cheat? The reason why people decide to cheat is because they don't have spirituality. So pay attention to your spiritual life. While waiting for marriage, build your spiritual life, build your prayer life, build your studying life, especially as women. Because once you get married the first month after this, after the end of the first month, you're already pregnant. Pregnancy symptoms will start. Money sickness and all the lights. So many things start happening. If you don't have a spiritual life as a single lady, you will lose it as a married woman. Are you getting what I'm saying? So many things start coming up. It is not, it is no longer you that sleeps and wakes up anytime you like. Once you are married, that is ruled out. You can't just sleep anytime you like and wake up anytime you like because you've had rest. Your responsibilities have increased. Your workload has increased. That's what marriage does to you. As a man, you can choose to say, well, as a single man, you can choose, well, I'm not going to hustle this week. I want to sleep. But when you get married, when you remember bills, you will stand up and go and hustle. You understand? Your spiritual life is very important or else there's what we call marriage shocks. When they start confronting you, you begin to make bad decisions. Why? Because you didn't have a good spiritual life. It helps you. So make sure you focus on your spiritual lives. Your spiritual life, beauty. There are some things your spouse can never give to you. Hey, I wish they had. Did you hear what I've just said? There are some things your spouse can never give to you. Nobody can give you peace. Nobody can give you joy. Nobody can give you strength. Nobody can give you tenacity. Nobody can give you passion. Nobody can give you spiritual fortification. 
Nobody can give you rest round about. Only God can give these things. So those of you that get that want to marry and all your troubles will be over. I want to marry and all my troubles will be over. It doesn't happen like that. You are dreaming. You need to wake up. You need to wake up to reality. Nobody can give you these things. Only God. No, no spouse can give you what life takes away from you. Your spouse understands what you say. Only God understands how you feel. You need him. It will help you as a man. It will help you. When that woman, you know women, sometimes we could be funny. When that woman begins to behave anyhow, it is your spirituality that will sustain you. The love you have for God. The fear of God that is in your spirit. Those are the things that will sustain you. Then God can begin to, the Holy Spirit, with the help of the Holy Spirit, you'll be able to go through that phase and be able to come out strong. But when you don't have spirituality, you will go and cheat. You will take bad decisions. You will make bad choices. Are you getting me? So please, it's very important, your spiritual life. And your self-esteem, is your self-esteem in good shape? How do you see yourself? How do you see other people? Do you see yourself and see other people correctly? How is your self-esteem? While waiting for marriage, I'm telling you areas of your life you should check. These are the little, little foxes that are destroying this marriage institution. Little, little things that we don't pay attention to. There are men that are threatened by the success of a woman. They can't stand a woman being successful. They can't stand it. They are educated. Some of them are bankers. They don't want their wife to do anything. Sit down at home. But eventually you go and get more money that I, that, that I don't have. That is a man with a self-esteem problem. Self-esteem problem. Is your self-esteem in good shape? While waiting for marriage. While waiting for marriage. Is your self-esteem in good shape? How do you see other people? Are you happy for... Are you a bitter lady? You're always bitter. You're always frowning. You are never happy for other people. You don't enjoy people. As a woman, when you don't enjoy people, what are you going to do in marriage? There are women who don't enjoy people. These are the women that give their mother-in-law headache. These are the women that once they get married to their husbands, everybody stay away from the man. How can a woman not enjoy people? There are women who don't enjoy people. There are women who don't enjoy people. You don't enjoy people. Your in-laws can't come to visit you. Are you getting me? Your in-laws can't come to visit you. You don't enjoy people. What are you going to do in marriage? Because a woman is a homemaker. A woman is a homemaker. Somebody said, but sometimes God can use your spouse to help you. A man who doesn't have erection, who knows he does not have erection, and deceived a lady to marry her because he knows that in Christian courtship, you are not supposed to have sex until you are married. Is that still a man whose spouse can help? That is a deceiver. There are things that we can help ourselves to overcome. Not sensitive issues. I am talking about sensitive issues. There are women that knows they don't have wombs. There are women with all kinds of medical conditions that you know that if this man hears, he will have to sit down to decide if he wants to marry you or not, but you decide to keep them. That is not the kind of help I'm talking about. Sensitive issues. You need to sit down and overcome your sensitive issues. Find help. Don't deceive people into love. So while waiting for marriage, find help. Don't deceive people into marriage. Find help. Your self-esteem. Still talking about finding yourself first. Is your life organized? Is your life organized? Are you a scattered single lady? Are you a scattered single man? You need to organize your life. While waiting for marriage, be organized. Are you coordinated? Are you always making bad choices and bad decisions? In one year, only you, you dated three men. In one year, only you, you dated three ladies. You don't need a prophet to tell you that you have a problem with making decisions. Because that same problem that you think hey, it's just those ladies that are not good, that same 
attitude. That thing is an attitude. That thing is a problem in your life. It's still going to affect you even in marriage. You wonder why people are not happy in marriage. You wonder even why Christians are not happy in marriage. You wonder why unbelievers are not happy in marriage. Because God is not going to do for you what you expect to do for yourself. While you are waiting, why being single? What are you doing? You need to sit down. Because the inability to make right decision about who to court or date is going to affect every other aspect of your life. You're always making bad choices. And I pray for you today that the Holy Spirit will help you in that aspect of your life. I'd like you to release yourself to the Holy Spirit. Release yourself to his help. Release yourself to the help of the Holy Spirit. And then number two, number two, we are still talking, we are still looking at what, what to do, what, what, which aspect of your life to be ready for how to be ready while waiting for marriage. And number two, I want to talk about develop your capacity to love. It's very important <laughs> because there, there are a lot of things that comes with marriage. See, falling in love, falling in love, it's something that comes easily. It's just, bah, you're in love. But staying in love, please listen carefully. Falling in love is easy. Staying in love is hard work. Please, I'd like somebody to help me write that there. Falling in love is easy. Staying in love is hard work. So the goal is not falling in love. The goal is staying in love. And not just staying in love. Staying in love with the same person. Can somebody help me write this out? The goal is not falling in love. The goal is staying in love and not just staying in love but staying in love with the same person and that requires hard work so you need to develop your capacity so how do how do you develop your capacity to love even while waiting for marriage while waiting for marriage you need to learn to be kind you learn to learn to stand by your promises. You need to learn how to make promises and stand by them. You need to learn how to be a man and a woman of integrity. You need to learn how to, you know, the gift of the spirit. One of the gifts of the spirit is long suffering. I think marriage is the reason why God included that gift among the gift of the spirit. Marriage is one of the reasons, long suffering. Do you know even God requires us to suffer long with other people? God expects us. One of, am I correct? One of the fruits of the Spirit. One of the fruits of the Spirit is long suffering. Now, if God expects us to suffer long with other people, please, what kind of long suffering do you think God will require of us from, with our spouse? It should be long, 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 so, 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 so. Are you understanding? As in unending. So you need to learn long suffering. And let me tell you one of my story. When I was on campus, there was this lady who was stranded, who didn't have where to stay. And I, I, I was there to help her. I told her to come and stay with me. Her father was richer than my father. But this lady, when we are cooking, she doesn't drop a cobble. And whatever I cook, she will eat it. She will eat everything I cook. And her father was a millionaire who comes to visit her every month, puts thousands of naira in her account, and she will never drop a cobble. When she goes to Lagos and she's coming back to school, she will never bring anything. So I got tired one day. So I went to my mentor and I told my mentor, I'm asking this lady to leave my house. She doesn't contribute anything. I'm the only one doing everything. And my mentor told me I should go and pray about it. When I prayed about it, the Holy Spirit said I should leave her. And I should learn because of where he's taking me to. That's why he has brought that lady my way. That I should learn how to give to other people without expecting anything in return. And that's what marriage is. What is love in marriage? I'm not talking about love in politics. Not love in business. I'm talking about love in marriage. Love in marriage is an unconditional commitment. An 
unconditional commitment with an imperfect person. That's love. An unconditional commitment. Hallelujah. Sorry about that. Love is an unconditional commitment. So the Holy Spirit said to me, the Holy Spirit said to me, stay with her and don't ask her to leave. And said she's living by herself. I said, eh. Hey. So I began to cook. There were lots of character I gained through that lady. Listen to me. That person that is cheating you now, that person that is cheating you, yes, love is an unconditional commitment towards an imperfect person. That person that is cheating you now is growing an attitude in her. You that they are cheating and you are still consistent in showing love, you are growing an attitude in you. In the future, both of you will get harvest. One of my mentors told me that everybody in life is sowing seed with their actions. So when you do good towards me, you have sown a seed. And when I respond with bad, I have sown a seed. Both of us, we reap. Because God said for as long as the earth remains, seed, time, and harvest shall not cease. So how do you grow capacity to love? The Bible says in Genesis chapter 29, from verse 19, you know the story. You know the story of Jacob. The Bible says he loved, Jacob loved, loved Rachel without, you understand, without any reservations. Hallelujah. Without any reservation. No reservation. She said she walked and they were like few days. So love is about sacrifices. Love is about sacrifices. And that sacrifices, you are not going to wait until you get into marriage before you begin to make those sacrifices. Start making sacrifices for your roommates. Start making sacrifices for your mother. Men, men, men. The first woman life introduces to you is your mom start making sacrifices towards her because that attitude will begin to grow in you and your wife will reap the harvest of that attitude if you see men that are cruel to their mother their wives always suffer if you see men that are kind to their mother their wives always enjoy and that's why i teach married ladies that's why i teach married ladies don't discourage your husband from being kind to his mother. Don't dis <laughs> it will be the greatest mistake of your life. Don't discourage, don't discourage your husband from being kind to his mother because that woman is the first woman life introduces to her. You are the second woman. And whatever attitude she I mean, whatever attitude your husband develops towards the mother, you will be the one to enjoy it. You will be the one to enjoy it. So are you growing the capacity to love even as a single man, as a single woman? Are you a man of integrity? You promise Sister Shade, you promise Sister Jessica, only you, you already know that marriage life is not going to be sweet for you. You are not a man of integrity. Having integrity is one of the ingredients that you need to develop while waiting for marriage because it's going to help you in marriage. Hey, they didn't hear that. Having integrity is one of the attitudes you need to develop while waiting for marriage because it's going to help you when you enter in that marriage. Your capacity to love. You are committed. Are you somebody that or you are you are a user? You know, some of us, I'm talking to single men and single women. Oh, some of us are users. It is only when you want to get something from that person. That is when you pick your phone to call and say, Hello, I'm just checking on you. How are you? Because you want to get something. You are a user. The attitude is already in you. Can you give without expecting anything in return? Can you give without expecting anything in return? You are developing capacity to love. And you know what God did to me? 
after a while, that lady on that lady, I'm telling you a story. She left, she went, she got her accommodation. Then another person came who needed help. This one, she doesn't even have a couple. Her parents are so poor. In fact, the father disowned her. The mother is so poor that she doesn't have a, a thousand naira to her name. So you see, this one now, I cannot expect anything from her because her parents are so poor. So God brought these two people. I used to be very stingy. I used to be very insensitive. I used to be very, you know, I didn't want people around me. But God saw where he was taking me to. I was going to marry a pastor. Not just marry a pastor. I was going to be a mother. A, not just a mother to my biological children. A mother to a lot of spiritual children. And God said, God, I'm sure God looked at God looked at me from heaven and said, I'm going to deal with this lady. I'm going to break her wings. And he brought these two ladies. And these two ladies, God used them for me. The one who was rich and the one who was poor. And God asked me to take care of them. And I took care of them until they left by themselves. And I had not, I, God did not permit me to send them away. He was building in me a capacity. Everything you are going through, my sister, everything you are going through, my brother, is building capacity in you. Praise the Lord. My time is up. You gave me 35 minutes. My time is up. So I'll just say one more. One more. And let me just talk about finance. While waiting for marriage. While waiting for marriage. How do you get ready? Develop your financial life. Ladies. This is where I always step on your toes. Oh. I am sorry. I can't change me. A lot of ladies have this dream of a beautiful wedding, fairy tale wedding, and all of that. You know, I said to somebody today, one of the greatest mistakes I made in my life was getting married without a source of income. You will go through struggles that are not in your spiritual syllabus, that are not in your destiny syllabus, rather. You will go through pains that are not in your destiny syllabus. Money is important. As much as faith is important, no matter how small, have a source of income. And as much as you can, diversify your income. Hallelujah. Learn a skill. Do business. While waiting for a white-collar job, do something. You need to make money. Money is important in marriage. Love is good. But love alone is not enough. Are you get what I'm saying? There are many things that come together to make marriage wonderful. Love is good, but love alone is not enough. Ladies, especially, you know, we have this sense of entitlement. And I'm, 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 I've been raised by God to deliver women from that mentality, this sense of entitlement that a man should carry all my responsibilities, a man should take care of me. You are not a liability, you are a helper. When God needed a helper, that was when he made you. He's not, God did not create you to, to occupy space. He said, I will make a helper for him. You don't help with empty hand. Are you getting what I'm saying? You don't help with an empty hand. You are a helper, especially ladies. We have this sense of entitlement. He will buy my soap. He will buy my lipstick. He will buy my jewelries. He will buy my this. He will buy my that. There is nothing wrong if you also buy it for yourself. Being rich has nothing to do with gender. The promises of God is for everybody. Am I correct? There is no where the scripture says, I will give men power to get wet. He said, I will give you power to get wet. Everybody is entitled to the blessings of God. Everybody is, as, the blessings of God is accessible to everybody. So stop being a liability and just sit somewhere and imagine a wedding gown without walking. When Boaz found roots, somebody write this down. When Boaz found roots, she was not sweating, she was walking. Boss found Ruth working. Do you know the kind of job Ruth was doing? She was a gleaner. That's the lowest. That's the lowest anybody can get to in the land. A gleaner. People who pick leftovers. She brought herself down to do that job. She was a gleaner. 
She would go to the field and glean. She would go and pick. That was weird. You think Boaz would have accepted her if she was idle? The Bible says, talk. I do talk. We lead to poverty. I am rich. I am rich. I am a CEO. God will bless me. God will do this. God has promised me. Without work, what will he bless? Develop your financial life. Ladies, there is nothing wrong if you are preparing for your wedding. Your husband brings money. You also bring the little you have and add to it. He's going to buy the jewelry you will use on your wedding. Buy the makeup. Pay the makeup artist. Pay this one. Pay that one. Pay this one. Pay that. Even if he has the capacity to do it, it is honorable for you as a woman to add to it. And then men. You know, we have some men who have seen women as sponsors. God did not raise a woman as a sponsor. He raised her as a helper. It means if somebody is going to help you, it means you also have some capacity on ground. That somebody is coming to hard help to help is an addition. Help is an addition. So as men develop it, it's very important. Don't just be speaking in tongues and be quoting Bible without a source of income and say, "I know what God has told me. I know what God said. I know what God said. He will bless me." Blah blah blah. And begin to say all kinds of things. It is good to quote scriptures with with work. The Bible says faith and work. Faith and work. Faith and work. Hallelujah. There are so many other things to tell you, but my time is up. In fact, I'm five minutes um, I'm five minutes exceeded my time. God bless you in the name of Jesus. I want to see you begin to I want to see you begin to put all of these things to work. There's so many things while waiting, develop. I've talked about develop your identity, develop your capacity to love is very important because your spouse is going to do a lot of things that you never expected he or she could do. It will take this capacity that you have developed from your neighbor, your parents, your friends and all of that. You know, this capacity have built up in you over time, you know, to be able to handle those heat. And I've also talked about develop your financial life. It's very important too for you to develop your financial life, develop your character, your character is very important for you to develop your character. <laughs> hey, 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 beauty is good, though, but it takes character to stay in marriage. As a man, you need that character. As a woman, you need that good, good character. You understand? Very important. And so many other things. God bless you in the name of Jesus. I appreciate you. You are loved. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Matt. This has been explosive and uh we don't even mind the time at all in short some people are even asking that <laughs> that you continue because uh no we're not we're not worried so i'm just going to ask at this point please if you have questions please post your questions so that i can ask i know someone asked the question earlier but you were still you were still talking so i couldn't ask but i'm just going to scroll up there so he says dating three women in a year that human beings do hide their inner character. So man need to move forward. Is it bad to move forward? So I think he's just trying to say maybe after the, he's moving forward after discovering that the character is, is not good. I'm not sure if you understand the question, Ma. I understand the question perfectly. I think what he's trying to say is that, what if I find out that this person is not suitable for me? Am I supposed to continue with that same person just because I don't want to end up dating three people in a year? Now, I am not saying that. What I'm saying is that you need to sit down and, talk and think about your decision-making capacity as a problem. And you need to fix that. If you don't fix it, it's going to affect other aspects of your life. Because marriage is an aspect of your life. You have other aspects of your life too. But you have just one attitude towards those aspects. It's the same attitude you have towards your marriage that you will have towards your finances, that you will have towards your spiritual life. And you get what I'm saying? So there is an attitudinal problem that you need to deal with, that you need to work on. Why am I making wrong choices? Why am I speaking with the wrong people? Why am I not meeting the right person? What am I not doing right? What should I do right? You need to find answers to that because it may never stop. All right. All right. And thank you very much. So I have another question here. Um, as a lady, can I marry someone who have observed a spiritually less, less active than I am? Can I pray with him to change? Someone who is spiritually less active. 
Is she born again? That's the most important thing. If she's born again, uh, there is room for growth. So God has not given up on any of us. Some people got married on, on stage five. Today they are on stage they are st stage, a stage one million, Seth. You understand? There is room for growth. The foundation is being born again. All right, ma'am. Uh, one other question. Uh, what do I do if my fiancé is already hinting that I will not continue work after marriage? Like maybe he wants to set up a business for me instead of my career. Why not? It's okay. If he's not asking you to sit down, I do at home. It's okay. Maybe he wants you to be able to, you know, have time for the home front. If he's willing to set up the business, it's very perfect. But asking you to sit down and not do anything is a no-no for me. You understand? Very no-no. All right. Thank you very much, ma'am. And um, another question here. How far can I go while trying to support my fiancé financially? How far is too much? That's as a lady. Okay. Yes, as a lady, if it is not marriage, if it is courtship, there is how far you can actually go. Or else you look desperate. Men are very, uh, they are very, they are logical being. He will, he would think you, you are, you are being desperate and you don't need that picture at all. You don't need to paint that picture. I want you to be able to, I want you to render help that you, you could render to any other person, like a brother in the church, someone you never knew. Are you getting me? So don't, um, don't overdo it. So, or as we read meanings to it and think you are trying to gain ground. You understand? Let him love you for who you are, not for the help and the money you are giving to him. All right, man. Thank you, man. So as a backup to the first question, so someone is asking, what if is the man that is spiritually less and he does not take spiritual things seriously? Seriously. Uh, if he doesn't take spiritual things seriously, it means that Amos 3, 3, we have to come to play. Can two work together except they be agreed? They mm -hmm. can't. So everybody will have to go their separate ways. It's okay not to be as hot or vibrant or no more script, as much scriptures that I know, but then you should be interested. You should yeah. love God. You should love the things of God. The husband of Deborah was not in ministry, but he didn't stop her from doing it. So you need to, you, there should be a balance. Uh -huh. So it means that the salvation is faulty. If you don't like spiritual things, you don't take spiritual things seriously, you will, you will be having problems. So let him go. Let him find a lady who also doesn't take spiritual things serious. They will make a good couple. All right, man. Thank you. Uh, so I have another question from Rosie. She said, Mommy, as a single lady, is it quick to accept a guy's proposal when having this conviction in heart? I'm not sure if the question is very clear. I, I, under, I understand what she's saying. Is it quick to accept a guy's proposal when you're having the conviction? Let me tell you about my own case. The day my husband proposed to me, right there and then, I accepted Mm. I didn't tell him that I was going to pray about it. And I've been married for over 15 years. So please, there are no laws to these things. People think yeah. that when I stress him and make him wait long, then I will gain honor. Anyway, I am a honorable wife. And I, yeah. <laughs> and I accepted his proposal right there and then. Because I was already convinced he's my husband. So why would I be delaying the man? Don't delay him. If you know you love him, you want him. Some of us are already in love. But you know, Shakara and ladies, is, we are like one and two. And God will deliver yeah. us. Just say yes to the man and move on. All right. Thank you very much, ma'am. I have another question here. What do you do when your partner hasn't introduced you to his family, but keeps telling you he has plans for you and you trust him because he's a spiritual person? Does that mean you should hold on to him? We need to find out why he has not. Because when you love somebody, the first thing, one of the first signs of love is that you want to show off. You want to show off the person you love. So why is he hiding you? That's one of the things you want to do. You want to show off the person. Maybe that man is coming from somewhere. Probably he has introduced someone before very quickly and the person ended up disappointing him. So he wants to take his time. So we need to understand why. What is keeping him back? Where is he coming from? This man has an history and he does not want history to repeat itself. Or... He is not serious, but you just told us that that he is serious with you. Then there is a reason he wants to be sure. 
so that it doesn't go and introduce you and at the end of the day nothing happens then the parents will say this is how you always introduce people and you will not do anything at the end of the day you understand so he may be trying to avoid such right thank you very much um there's a question i missed up here let me just quickly go to it okay what do you do when you are available for a man to marry you and the man says two years relationship first or oh, what you and your parents want marriage is the relationship the best alternative for a lady who wants to be married without waste of time? I know. Even me, I do not agree on a marriage without uh, courtship. There is supposed to be a background knowledge of who we are and then planning and a lot of things, getting to know the, the basics. So it's, it's, it's okay to do courtship. There's nobody who's going, just going to jump into marriage. I just need to and just get married. So you need to be willing to be patient to run this courtship marriage will eventually happen the bible says it that believes the bible says it that believes does not make haste so let's so wait the, and be patient man is asking for two years relationship first is that fine the man is asking for two years courtship before marriage yes isn't it yes not friendship oh. he's uh, asking for two years so for them to court before they now get married but the lady wants the marriage immediately and that's why I'm saying it doesn't work like that. There should be a, 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 an opportunity for a background knowledge to, for us to understand basics, ask questions, and just have this peripheral knowledge about ourselves. Though we can't know everything in courtship, but we should know mm -hmm. the fundamentals. So courtship precedes marriage. is important. Okay, thank you. So there's a question here, but I think I'll just respond. Kakali. So she's not saying that you should divorce your husband. We're talking about um single people that are not married you want to marry someone do you see the question uh is a follow-up to the answer that you gave so he's saying that do you mean if your husband or wife is not a spiritual no person? we are talking about those in courtship yes no we are talking about those in courtship those in courtship not those married not those mm -hmm. who are married we are talking about those in courtship if you're in courtship and the party you want to marry doesn't take spiritual things seriously, two of you cannot walk at work along. So why not? Why why wait to go into marriage and have edict? You cannot just avoid that edict now. Instead of going into marriage to start praying for his salvation. So that's what we're saying. Yeah. That's right. Thank you. One last question, ma'am. I know we're already behind time. So I want to what's the difference between courting and dating? good i love that question now this is what i always say to people this generation brought dating you know some of us are trying to follow this generation but god did, what, what we what we were taught and meant was courtship because courtship is actually a time you prepare for marriage uh, dating is a time you wait for courtship mm. are you getting me that's why they yeah. say, I've been with him for three years. Mama, he has not proposed, though. I'm just with him. He has not proposed. So what are you doing with him? If the purpose is not for marriage, what do you need the relationship for? But it seems everybody has generally accepted dating and said, let's date. Then we will now, after some time, we are still observing ourselves. We will not start courtship. Then we will not get married. But that's not how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be, Bible says, our God declares the end from the beginning. If we don't know where we are going, why start the journey? That's the day right. my husband proposed to me, he said, I want to marry you. I have prayed. God said, you are my wife. We started coaching, and after a few years, we got married. That is the one that I know. But this generation says they want to date and first test themselves and first wait. Somebody can be with somebody for six years and is waiting for a question. Will you marry me? It's the madness this generation has brought and we don't know what to do about it. But it's not supposed to be. If you don't know where you are going, don't start the journey. That's right. Thank you very much. And that's the last question that we have for this session. We are very, very, very Thank grateful. You. Very grateful. Thank you, man. God bless you. So um, I Amen. think it's help us lead the, the closing prayer so that we can disperse for uh, the today, rather. Okay, okay. I should pray. Yes, ma'am. Closing right. prayer, ma'am. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, our Amen. Lord and our God, we know more than what we have shared today. You will minister to us. Everybody will find a message. Everybody will get a revelation. Their lives will not remain the same again. The purpose Amen. of this world is not to excite ourselves. It's to inspire ourselves. Lord Amen. God, I pray they will not just be 
challenged, they will be changed. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will give them the grace to begin to pay attention to the essentials, to begin to do the right things, take the right decision in the name of Jesus, that in few years to come, we'll be able to make references to teachings like these and say, thank God I had this message. My life is beautiful. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, ma'am. God bless you. Thank you. Oh, God bless you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Someone is asking when next, please. Don't worry. We will set up another time very soon. And it's been wonderful. Thank you, ma'am. We're very, very grateful. God bless, bless you, ma'am. Have a wonderful evening, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. And you too. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. And uh, thank you for staying. I know we're already like four minutes past the closing time, but I'm sure you agree with me that it has been worth it. We bless God for the life of Mama Jane. We bless God for this opportunity to hear the truth, you know, the deep truth. There is no cover up, no sugar coating, nothing. We thank God for this opportunity. And with this, we have come to the end of the Metamorphosize program. I I hope and I know that by God's grace, you know, change and growth and a deep spiritual, physical, financial, mental transformation has come upon every one of us and every one of our lives. Uh, as we go, I just want to thank everybody that has been here from the beginning. We thank um, all our guest ministers once again. We thank our sisters from LSE Lagos, LSE Korodu, LSE uh, Omole, LSE Potakot, yeah, all the people that have joined us at one point or the other. And of course, I would very much like to thank um, the, the uh, committee, you know, that brought this together, uh, the support and the prayers and everything. God bless every one of us in the name of Jesus. And the most, well, you know, the most important, the before the most important, God is the most important. We also want to thank our pastorate, uh, the pastorate of RCCG, Living Seed Lagos, Living Seed Omole, Living Seed Church Omole, Pastor Adela Bolaji. Thank you for, you know, the opportunity and really the idea, you know, to, you know, do something like this. Thank you because you sparked it in us and it seemed like it was difficult at first but here we are and it has been achieved and that's why every day when I prayed I said you know this is not a coincidence God ordained this and he made it to come to pass so we're very grateful Pastor Adela Bolaji we also like to thank the associate pastors Pastor Nyeka Ogu and of course my husband Pastor uh, Akin Emi Akin Wale we're very grateful for the opportunity that you've given to us. And we know that, you know, when we'll have, we'll definitely have more uh, more opportunities. And the great news is that now that, you know, the Lagos State Government has permitted churches to open, we will see in church and uh, we will invite you. We'll be inviting Mama Jane, we'll be inviting all these other people to our church physically. And we're going to, you know, be hearing from them once again. So truly, honestly, we're very grateful. And then the last, and the most important is gratitude to God. We're grateful to God, very grateful to God. He's kept us, preserved us, you know, giving us wisdom, giving us knowledge, giving us strength. He has kept us to this very moment. Everything, everything, everything that has happened is because of our God in heaven. And so for that sole reason, we return all glory to the name of God. All right, I think um, I've said a lot, so I'm just going to exit now and i i'm going to play a very nice song so that we can all exit perhaps a dance song uh i am miracle that's what we started with today so with that we can exit god bless you god bless you god bless you deeply oh and on a very important note the recordings will be made available on youtube so you can check the rccg living city church page and it's apart from today it's also posted on you could do um Facebook page uh, you know, every day. Uh, it's only today that we had to stream. We could only we were only able to stream with um, um, with the uh, Omole, RCCG Omole Lagos page. So the Facebook uh, recordings will be made available, and also uh, it will be available on Facebook. It will be available also on YouTube. So if you want to ever go back to recordings, it will be available. Once again, thank you. I think I've said more than enough. 
I love you guys. Have a wonderful evening, everybody. And of course, drum roll. <laughs> convention begins. RCCG convention begins. It is wonderful. Uh, if you haven't joined, make sure you check YouTube, check Dove TV on, on DSTV or Go TV. Check um just type it in your Google and you'll find something that will direct you to watch it online. Don't miss any day. Don't miss any day of this convention. It will be wonderful indeed. Our lives will be changed forever in Jesus' name. Bye, everybody. I leave you with I Am Miracle by Anthony Brown and Jesus and Group Therapy.